I finally got the Coral AI Mini PCIe Accelerator last week and it totally blew my mind. It's a chip built by Google designed to run AI workloads on the edge. And this nifty piece of hardware is perfect for home automation systems that depend on computer vision like intruder detection or building your own DIY Furbo. Now, my objective was to get this thing running on a single board computer. So allow me to introduce you to the Zimmer board and the Zimmer blade. And what I like about these is that they have full PCIe slots ready to be hacked on today, unlike some SBCs, <laughs> Raspberry Pi 5. Jokes aside, it seems that Pi 5's PCIe capabilities are still awaiting some peripheral adapter support, so for now, I'm forced to chart my own path. Now, I did get in touch with the folks over at Pineberry, and I picked up each of these hats here designed for the Raspberry Pi 5, and I'm pretty stoked about it because they're gonna support Gen 3 speeds but for now I'm still waiting on my order. Now this chip has an M2 form factor with an AE key. So the mission was to somehow marry it with my Zima blade. So after some intense office spelunking, I unearthed a Wi-Fi card with a PCIe connection, which had an M2 slot. Now, if you don't have this set up, no worries. Any standard Raspberry Pi with the USB TPU accelerator will work just as well. But the thing about the USB version is, and I actually didn't know this, USB 3 only has a throughput of around 600 megabytes per second. So not only is my setup half the price, but it's technically faster. It's also cooler, literally, thanks to the better thermoregulation than the USB version. Finally, this approach also leaves open the USB port, which gives us more room for activities. But this magnificent piece of hardware is going to be useless if we can't get working software to wield its power. So I booted her up and ran the installs. This comes with an operating system called Casa OS, which is a flavor of Debian, but we're just gonna use a stock version of Debian 12, which is like the most recent version of Debian. And we're just gonna overwrite the operating system on this. So I'm just gonna flash uh, the, the operating system to this thumb drive, we'll boot it onto here, and that way you can follow along because you could use that version of Debian on a Raspberry Pi, a mini PC, spare laptops, etc. And then this tutorial will be a little bit more agnostic for you. Okay, so the way we get Debian 12 onto our Zimmer Blade is by putting the ISO image onto this thumb drive here, flash it onto the thumb drive, and then we plug the thumb drive into the Zimmer Blade, turn on the Zimmer Blade, press F11 until it gives us uh, the system BIOS, and then from there we can um, write this operating system to the onboard storage and install it and be good to go. Okay, so we now have our fresh install of Debian 12, and so I, I could um, open up the terminal here and start programming, but I actually want to use warp, so I'm going to connect remotely from my laptop, and I'm just this interface is going to be faster for me, and we will start installing our programs. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to clients right here, and we selected the host name Debian. So I should be able to use this IP address to connect. So I'm gonna pull open a warp terminal here, and I'm gonna do SSH, and I did Tim as the username. Okay, so this is our fresh uh, Debian install. So let's get the TPU working first. So I'm gonna go to Coral AI Accelerator M2 so I can see the installation instructions, documentation. So we're gonna plug in some of these commands here, download the drivers. All right, so let's check well, if we check for the TPU, it's not connected right now, so it's not going to show anything. Um, and then for the PCI driver, Okay, so the TPU not being connected is fine. I haven't plugged it in yet. But the driver here, we did download the driver, but it's not showing here. And what I found is that we need to disable secure boot for that to work. Grab this command here. Okay, so technically we disabled secure boot. So what I'm gonna do is plug in the TPU and then we'll reboot the system and everything should work at that point. All right, so let's try running these commands now. So it should recognize the TPU. Okay, there it is. Coral Edge TPU looks good. Should recognize the driver as well now. So let's give that a shot. There it is. 
looks good. If we just wanted to hack using the Coral AI stuff, then we could download PyCoral. And fortunately, it looks like the PyCoral library has been neglected. So if you try to run it on any recent distro, you're going to have a bad time. It's basically telling me that I need an older version of Python in order to get it to work. Which is kind of lame. So I'm actually not even going to use PyCoral because Frigate can use the TPU out of the box. So let's just go right to, to using Frigate. So now that our system recognizes the TPU, what can we actually do with this hunk of cyber black magic? Enter Frigate. And no, I'm not talking about a level in GoldenEye. Frigate's this awesome home lab computer vision system that works seamlessly with the Coral AI hardware. Score. But will it actually work on our Debian 10 shimmed Wi-Fi adapter turned PCIe M2 slot running on an x86 tech marvel that sounds like it escaped from a Netflix series plotline? Probably, but we gotta put that to the test. So Frigate uses Docker, so let's go ahead and download Docker. I'm gonna grab this command right here, and then we are going to run this guy. All right, and then I should be able to list containers. We have none running we Can list images. We have none, but at least Docker is installed and ready to go. So let's go over to the Frigate documentation. I'm going to just use a Docker run command with a bunch of flags because that's what I have set up already. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use this guy here. So one of the dependencies is a service called Mosquito or MQTT, uh, and it's how uh, messages are relayed and it's how events are captured so let's go ahead and set that up as well so let's do this this one all right this is the primary service and then we can enable the service and uh, check the status so it is running it looks good one thing i did note though is we want to edit the comp file so um and we want to add just two flags in here okay so we just identified the port and then we said anonymous origins can listen not just localhost so let's go ahead and restart the service yeah let's use this right here so let's start let's uh, run the frigate container so you can pull the command line argument from the getting started guide on Frigate. This is what I'm using here because uh, that's the driver for the TPU and everything. Um, also, it expects a config file under a folder called Frigate. So actually, let's go ahead and create that. So I've got a root directory and make a, a folder called Frigate. And then I am going to make a config.yml file. And this is actually where you instantiate all your different cameras, zones, and like protocols calls and things like that. This gives you a good example to go off of. So let me throw this in there. So what I'm doing here is the MQTT server. Uh, I enabled the true. I think it's set to true by default, but I put my IP address to get your IP address to just do host name. I. And it's gonna be that first one. That's the port that we identified 1883. For detectors, I'm using the PCIe Edge TPU. If you're using a USB, grab what that looks like out of the documentation. And then I just enable certain things like that it can record, that it can detect, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. We can revisit it if it doesn't work. But this is basically what you tweak to get Frigate to work. So to start the container, we're gonna run. And on the first run, it's going to download all the layers. After that, it'll be faster because the uh, the image is going to be stored locally. And theory, we have a, a container running. So technically, it should be exposed on localhost port 5000, uh, the web UI that is. So if I go over here and I plug in this, okay, so this is Frigate. This is the, um, the web UI, and this is where you kind of manage everything. This is that config file that I created but now that we can just edit it from here and we can restart the service every time we edit it but our camera has no feed so here's the thing frigate expects you to use essentially an ip camera i don't have an ip camera so I'm gonna use a webcam. Now the trick there is IP cameras create RTSP streams that are available on their hosts. Uh, a webcam doesn't have a host, it doesn't have anything like that, it's just a peripheral. Um, but what you can do is you can use some open source software to stream your webcam to an RTSP. So that's actually what we're gonna do. So it's just a standard USB webcam. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to my Zima Blade.
Okay. So basically what we have to do is we have to set up an RTSP server. So let's grab this. Then we're gonna unzip that. And then there's a command to run it. And for me, the one that was working best was the, actually, sorry, it was this guy here. Okay, so you do your IP address, which is hostname I, and then I'm exposing it on port 554. You could technically choose a different port if you want. And we should get this feed here. This logging here is basically saying Frigate is trying to find a stream on this path here. And we haven't set that up yet. So that's the problem. Frigate is is trying to connect. So I'm gonna leave this going. You wanna leave the RTSP server going, but now what we have to do is we have to direct the webcam to the RTSP server. We have to take the, the live feed and stream it to the RTSP server. FFmpeg actually can do that. So you have to put your IP address in here, a localhost IP address in there. You have to put the port and you have to give it a path. I'm just gonna give it a path of my stream. And so this should open up the webcam and stream it into our server here. All right, so that looks promising. The frames are coming through technically. And you can see, okay, it's publishing to my stream. So what's going on here is now we have an RTSP stream available at this location here. So it's protocol, IP address, port, path. And so that's the whole thing, right? Like for the config file for Frigate, now we just have to make sure that it's hooked into this. And it is RTSP 192.168. 0218554. So, oh, now we're getting an image. Now this is a static image. It will just take a snapshot and it will throw it in there. If you want to get a live stream, you go to um, this section here, bird's eye, but it does work. And I have one detection algorithm running on this, person detection. So anytime it sees a person, it's actually gonna start recording and it's, it's considered a frigate event. Like right here, it, it, there's actually a recording in progress right now because it detects it detected me. And what's really cool about this is if I move the webcam over here, it actually stops recording, right? So now if I refresh this, still says it's in progress, but now it's done, see? So again, it's running TensorFlow models against the camera and then deploying logic based on the result of those models. So if I refresh this, yeah, so now it, it, it captured some more clips, right? And the inference, when it runs the frames against the um, computer vision model, the inference happens on the TPU. That inference time, which is how fast it takes to, to run the inference, should be stored in the, yeah, right here, right? So this is our Coral One, Coral Accelerator chip and that's showing how fast the inference is. Now that's actually a little bit slower than when I run it from the command line, but um, that might be like a cold inference when the model's not loaded into memory or something like that. So you get a whole mission control here and you can add as many cameras as you want. If I had a facility, I would totally like create a, a home lab surveillance system with multiple cameras and like multiple TPUs. Honestly, you could remotely manage an entire facility and it's just, uh, I don't know, it's just bringing like the whole home lab thing to the next level. So video, I wasn't even gonna make a video about this, but I just thought it was so cool. So here we are.